I have a phone overhead the book and it will be recording as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it. Uh, thank you for reading. My goal with this research is to eventually write a book on the subject by converting this thesis into something much shorter, less technical, better edited, and easier to read. To that end, I greatly appreciate any feedback from my readers about the concepts presented in this thesis. If you find something interesting during your reading or if you want me to cut, expand any particular concept, please tag me on LinkedIn or Twitter at Jason P. Lowry and let me know. I will be checking social media for tags, reviews, so any and all feedback will be read. Uh, the following is a high definition and copy edition version of my thesis submitted to DOD and MIT in February 2023 as the final do deliverable of my U.S. National Defense Fellowship. Each year, the Department of the Air Force selects two officers to serve as the U.S. National Defense Fellows. This fellowship is a DOD-sponsored program where mid-career officers attend a graduate-level systems engineer and program at MIT to research strategic military applications of emerging technologies. As the U.S. Space Force first and only U.S. National Defense Fellow, I devoted my fellowship towards researching the national strategic implications of Bitcoin. By the end of this research effort, I concluded that Bitcoin could be one of the most significant military-grade security technologies to emerge in the 21st century. This document represents my final deliverable to the DOD and contains information I've shared with the Office of the President of the United States, Office of the Secretary of Defense, and the Office of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Please bear in mind that this document was written in six months while completing a full course load of graduate engineering classes at MIT. It's just a clunky first draft of a new theory that I intend to shorten and refine over time with the help of your continual feedback and support. It should be emphasized that even though I am an active duty military officer sponsored by the DOD to research Bitcoin at MIT, the theories presented in this thesis are strictly my own personal views based on what I have learned from my own academic research. This thesis does not reflect any official position or endorsement of the US Department of Defense, Department of Air Force, or MIT but it should be their official position because this is great. This is a collection of philosophies reaching a glorious conclusion. All right. So we're going to start with the abstract title by Jason Paul Lowry. Submitted to the System Design and Management Program, February 2023, in partial fulfillment of the requirements for the degree of Master of Science in Engineering and Management. Abstract. Current analysis of Bitcoin's underlying proof-of-work technology is almost exclusively based on financial, monetary, or economic theory. Recycling the same theoretical frameworks when performing hypothesis deductive analysis of Bitcoin has the potential to create systemic level analytical bias, which could negatively impact public policy, making efforts negatively impact pu public policy making efforts and could even pose a threat to US national security. There's gonna be some hiccups, bear with me. This thesis introduces a novel theoretical framework for analyzing the potential national strategic impact of Bitcoin as an electro cybersecurity technology rather than a peer to peer cash system. The goal of this thesis is to give the research community a different frame of reference they can utilize to generate hypotheses hypotheses and deductively analyze the potential risks and rewards of proof of work technologies as something other than strictly monetary policy, uh, monetary technology. 
The author asserts it would be beneficial for researchers to explore alternative functionality of proof of work technologies to eliminate potential blind spots, provide a more well-rounded understanding of the risks and rewards of proof of work protocols like Bitcoin, and positively contribute to the development of more informed public policy in support of the March 2022 U.S. Presidential Executive Order on Ensuring the Responsible Development of Digital Assets and the May 2022 U.S. Presidential Executive Order on Improving the Nation's Cybersecurity. Utilizing a grounded theory methodology, the author combines different concepts from diverse fields of knowledge, biology, psychology, anthropology, political science, computer science, system securities, and modern military strategic theory to formulate a novel framework called power projection theory. Based on the core concepts of power projection theory, the author inductively reasons that proof of work technologies like Bitcoin could not only function as monetary technology, but could also, and perhaps more importantly, definitely more importantly, function as a new form of electro cyber power projection technology, which could empower nations to secure their most precious bits of information, included but not limited to financial bits of information against belligerent actors by giving them the ability to impose severe physical cost on other nations in, from, and through cyberspace. The author calls this novel power projection tactic soft war and explores its potential impact on national strategic security in the 21st century. Like most grounded theory research efforts, the primary deliverable of this thesis is a novel theory rather than deductive analysis of a hypothesis derived from existing theory. Beautiful philosophy that needs to be adopted and enacted upon immediately. My two cents. And I haven't read the whole thing yet. Acknowledgements. First, I'd like to thank General C.Q. Brown for giving me the courage and top cover to devote myself to this research topic and to the Department of the Air Force for entrusting me with this assignment. I would also like to thank everyone in my personal life who tolerated the amount of time and mental effort I committed to this. You gave me the continual support and confidence I needed to follow through. This, en this endeavor and turned out to be more challenging than I expected in ways I never would have expected. And your support plus your sacrifice played an essential role. I would like to thank everyone who helped me formulate this grounded theory. When I first <coughs> I'll probably edit that out on the top down version like my setup. Okay. I would like to thank everyone who helped me formulate this grounded theory. When I first indicated my interest in this topic, I could not have imagined the amount of feedback I would receive. I feel very thankful for everyone who took the time to listen to me and challenge my reasoning. Your discourse helped me question my biases and push me to formulate the structure of the theory as it exists today. I owe the success of this research effort to you. Thank you for your sincere feedback. I look forward to future discussion and debate. It's impossible for me to list everyone who I wish to thank by name, but a few specific people I want to give thanks to are as follows. <clears throat> Adam Back, I follow him. Greg Foss, I follow him on Twitter. Robert Breedlove, I follow him. Jeff Booth, I follow him. Preston, I follow him. Level 39, I think so. Michael Saylor, CEO of MicroStrategy, definitely. Natalie Smolensky, I don't think so. Asher 68W, I don't think so. Mike Alfred, I think I do. Dennis Porter, I do. Jason Williams, I do. Luke Roman. Jim O'Flattery. Susie B. Max and Stacy Kaiser. I, I don't know if Max has a Twitter, but I've definitely seen him talk. Peter McCormick. The... Pump, the three of five Pompliano brothers, Anthony, Joe, and John. Natalie Brunel, I follow Anthony. Sorry, Joe and John. Uh, 
Ben Prentice, Joe Burnett, Matthew Pines, I follow him, Eric Malone, Brandon Quintum, Brian Harrington, Tom Strolite, George Peacock, Nathan Perry, Corey Swan, follow him. He's called out almost every fraud in crypto well before other people. Dylan Leclerc, an excellent follow. Ter Demister, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Marbella Hoddle, Bobby Von Hodowitz, CK Snarks, Mike Hobart, Wealthy Theory, Adam Gladstein, I follow him, Joseph Aguera, sorry, Gazala Victoria, Taron Jeroda, Eric Hart, Samson Mao, I follow him, Phil Du Bois, Jimmy Song, I think I follow him, Nick Batia, Kelly La, no, Dan Held, I follow him. Poens, WS Bitcoin, Mark Moss, and many others. It's truly been a pleasure engaging with you. I'd also like to thank Rebecca for the custom drawings she provided. Okay, a little bit more on Jason Larry's biography. Major Jason Spook Larry is a Department of Defense sponsored U.S. National Defense Fellow, Department of the Air Force Fellow, MIT System Design and Management Fellow, Ashton nautical engineer and active duty field grade officer in the U.S. Space Force. Prior to attending MIT, Jason served as the Director of Operations for United Space Force, United States Space Force, Second Space Launch Squadron. Before that, he was a founding member of the cadre of officers who stood up the United States Space Force, serving as the Deputy Chief of the Commander's Action Group for the USSF Space Operations Command and US Space Command combined. Force Space Component Command and US, yeah, wow. Jason transferred into USSF from the US Air Force where, where he served as <clears throat> an all source intelligence analyst and subject matter expert in electronic warfare, blast and ballistics effects, and space weapon system design. Jason has a decade of experience serving as a technical advisor for U.S. senior officials to include the Office of the President of the United States, Office of the Secretary of Defense, and the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. He has a master's degree in Astronautical Engineering from Air Force Institute of Technology, Ohio, and a bachelor's degree in Mechanical Engineering from Baylor University, Texas. Table of Contents, I'll just leave that here. I'm not going to read that out. I'm already struggling. Hopefully, when I get to the good stuff, it'll be a lot better. Acronyms. To know, I will read that. ABP, Abstract Power Based. ABP, Abstract Based Power. That's, he does have typos in it. So that could be one of them. We'll see how we go. BCR, Benefit to Cost Ratio of Attack. B is benefit of attack. Well, it has an, a sub set A to the letters. So it's B, C, R, A. Benefit to cost ratio of attack. B sub letter A. Cost of attack. You have C, 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 H. Congested, contested, competitive, and hostile. You have C, F, S, C, C. Combined force space component command you have dino d 
decentralized in name only. You have DOD, Department of Defense, EO, Executive Order. Uh, then you have the official ones, Office of the President of, this, of the United States, Office of the Secretary of Defense, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, PPB, Physical Power Based. Yeah, so the first one is... A typo. Hopefully, I could be wrong, but due to this one being PPB, it would make sense. Anyway, surprised nobody caught that. Uh, SDM, System Design and Management. Yeah, you don't need the rest of it. Executive Summary. All right, we're really getting into it now. All right, double check. Everything's still in the frame. Pretty good. All right. Oh, I could definitely drop this down a little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Okay. Executive summary. Figure one shows five different ways that machinery can be used to impose severe physical costs on others in, from, and through five different domains. The image at the bottom shows the specialized machinery that is currently being used to keep special bits of information called Bitcoin secure against belligerent actors. This image illustrates the bottom line of my thesis, which is that Bitcoin isn't strictly a monetary protocol. Instead, Bitcoin appears to be emerging as a cyber power projection tactic for the digital age. While most software can only logically constrain computers, Bitcoin can physically constrain computers and impose severe physical costs, as measured in watts, on belligerent actors in, from, and through cyberspace. Bitcoin's global adoption could therefore represent a revolutionary approach to cybersecurity and could dramatically reshape how modern society secures their most valuable digital resources. Land, sea, air, space, and cyberspace with a bunch of ASICs. Bitcoin could represent a strategically vital national security technology for the digital age. However, the American public may not understand why Bitcoin has the potential to be so strategically important because they don't appear to understand the complexity of one, the computer theory behind the design concept called proof of work, two, modern power projection tactics, three, the function of militaries, or four, the profession of war fighting. If the theories presented in this thesis prove to be valid, then the American public's lack of understanding about these core concepts could jeopardize U.S. national strategic security. Let me make some notes there. Take a sip. The future of U.S. national security, strategic security hinges upon cybersecurity, and Bitcoin has demonstrated that proof-of-work functions as a new type of cybersecurity system. Nations appear to be walking up to the potentially substantial strategic benefits of Bitcoin and learning that it could be in their best strategic interest to adopt it. Hence, Russia's recent 180-degree pivot to supporting Bitcoin. Another Cold War could be kicking off, except instead of a space race, it could be a cyberspace race, as is often the case with the emergence of new power projection technology. Speed of adoption may be critical. Speed of adoption is critical. He has to be so careful with how he says these things. And yet still he says probably some of the most radical stuff in here but it's all based on sound theory
If the U.S. does not consider stockpiling strategic Bitcoin reserves, or at the very least, encouraging Bitcoin adoption, the author believes the U.S. could forfeit a strategically vital power projection technology lead to one of its greatest competitors and set itself back in global power dominance. The current approach that U.S. leaders are t taking to analyze the potential risk and benefit of proof-of-work technologies like Bitcoin could therefore represent a threat to U.S. national security. It is particularly concerning that U.S. policymakers have arbitrarily chosen to categorize Bitcoin as cryptocurrency and, ta and tacitly allow institutions with conflicts of interest to claim to be experts in proof-of-work technology. These institutions could use their misperceived expertise to influence public policy-making efforts for their own benefit, compromising U.S. national security, strategic security in the process. Here's a topic he's going to prove to you. Just because something is first used as something doesn't make it that thing. People made it that thing. Better use or additional uses at the very least are there. <clears throat> Computer scientists have been researching proof-of-work protocols for over 30 years. That's more than twice as long as Bitcoin has existed. Since the beginning of this research endeavor, it was hypothesized that proof-of-work protocols could serve as a new type of cybersecurity system that could empower people to keep computer resources, namely their most valuable bits of information, secure against hacking and exploitation simply by imposing severe physical costs in the form of computer power on belligerent actors trying to access or interfere with that information. In other words, computer scientists rediscovered what military officers have known about physical security for thousands of years to stop or deter bad guys from doing bad things, make it too physically expensive for them to do those bad things. And Bitcoin applies that to money. Here we go. While academia theorized via formal academic channels about how proof of work could work, software engineers and doers like Adam Back, Hal Finney, and Satoshi Nakamoto designed, built, and deployed several operational prototypes via informal, non-academic channels. Today, Bitcoin has emerged as by far the most globally adopted proof of work cybersecurity system to date. Bitcoin is so physically powerful in comparison to other open source proof of work protocols that a popular mantra has emerged initiated by technologist Michael Saylor, MIT, 1987. There is no second best. There's no better copycat than nobody who came along and improved upon it. There's only Bitcoin. Uh, okay. But what could Bitcoin possibly have to do with warfare? To understand this connection, one must recall the primary function of militaries. Sovereign nations have a fiduciary responsibility to their people to protect and defend access to international thoroughfares, i.e. land, sea, airspace, to preserve freedom of action, the ability to exchange goods with other nations. When a nation intentionally degrades another nation's freedom of action or inability to exchange goods across these thoroughfares, that activity is often considered to be an act of war. Militaries exist explicitly to protect and defend people's access to these thoroughfares. The way militaries accomplish this is by imposing severe physical costs on those who try to deny access to those thoroughfares or impede a population's ability to exchange goods across them. Military branches are categories based on the thoroughfare they assure access to and preserve freedom of action in. Armies assure access to land. Naval forces assure access to the sea. Air forces assure access to the sky. Space forces assure access to space. Regardless of the domain to which access is secured, each service effectively works the same way, 
preserved the nation's ability to utilize each thoroughfare by imposing severe physical costs on anyone who denies access to it. Physical power is used to stop and deter imposing to stop and deter belligerent activity in, from, and through these thoroughfares. The more physically powerful, motivated, and aggressive a military is, the better it usually performs. The more a military service can utilize technology to, to project power in clever ways, the more effective it is at its primary value-delivered function. One of the most strategically important thoroughfares of the 21st century is colloquially known as cyberspace. It is a vital national strategic interest of every nation to preserve their ability to exchange a precious, a precious resource across this thoroughfare, valuable bits of information, just like they already do for land, sea, air, and space. Sovereign nations have both a right and a fiduciary responsibility to their people to protect and defend their access to this international thoroughfare. If a nation were to intentionally degrade another freedom of action or ability to exchange valuable bits of information across cyberspace, that activity would likely be interpreted as an act of war, as it would in any other domain. Sovereign nations. What about sovereign individuals? Sovereignty in general. Bitcoin is essential for sovereignty. That's the case he's making. He's making the case for the United States, but he's really saying every nation should do it. He has an almost another 400 pages about why the U.S. should do it. All right, let's get through this. One of the most strategically important thoroughfares of the 21st century in any other, as it would in any other domain. Until Bitcoin, nations have not had an effective way to physically secure their ability to freely exchange bits of information across cyberspace without resorting to kinetic, i.e. lethal power. This is because they have not had access to technology which enables them to impose severe physical costs on belligerent actors in, from, and through cyberspace. This appears to have changed with the discovery of open source proof of work technologies like Bitcoin, a complex system which empowers people to physically restrain belligerent actors. This technology works and adoption has already scaled to the nation state level. Thanks to proof of work protocols like Bitcoin, nations can now utilize special machinery to impose severe physical restrictions on other nations in, from, and through cyberspace in a completely non-destructive and non-lethal manner. This capability has the potential to transform cybersecurity by enabling computer networks to run computer programs which don't give a specific group of users special or unimpeachable permissions over the computer network and entrust them not to exploit those permissions. With the ability to impose severe physical costs on users through cyberspace, zero trust computer networks and a new type of internet can now be designed where users have can have their special permissions physically revoked if they abuse or exploit them. The first computer network to prove this design concept appears to be the network of computers utilizing Bitcoin. Bitcoin is proof that proof of work works. At its core, Bitcoin is a computer network that transfers bits of information between computers using a zero-trust physical security design. As previously mentioned, bits of information can represent any type of information, including but not limited to financial information that might be used to support international payments and financial settlements. It makes perfect sense that a proof-of-work computer network's first use case would be to physically secure the exchange of vital, vital financial bits of information, but that is clearly not the only use case. This technology could have far wider reach and applications, as there are many other types of precious information that society would want to physically secure in the information age. To that end, Bitcoin could represent the dawn of an entirely new form of military-grade 
electro cyber information security capability. A protocol that people and nations could utilize to raise cyber forces and defend their freedom of action in, from, and through cyberspace. The bottom line is that Bitcoin could represent a soft war or electro cyber defense protocol, not merely a peer to peer electronic cash system. The author believes proof of work technology could change the future of national strategic security and international power dynamics in ways that we have barely started to understand. Okay? The people he briefed probably didn't understand before he briefed them.